Now he says this, verse 14, "...and unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God." And I'll change that now and give you my translation. "...to the messenger of the church in Laodicea write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God." Now, this is the only place in Scripture where amen is a proper name, and it's the name of Christ. Over in Isaiah 65, 16, it should read, The God of the Amen. And here we have this name that is given, and I'd read 2 Corinthians 1, 20. That's what I'm after. For all the promises of God in Him are yea, and in him, amen, under the glory of God by us. The Lord Jesus is the amen. He has the last word. He's the alpha and the omega. And so we have here the fact that he is the one that's going to fulfill all the promises of God. And he lets the Laodiceans know that because this is a church that has rejected the deity of Christ and that, by the way, the word amen is the only thing he draws out of the vision of himself we had in the first chapter. Now he says he's the faithful and true witness. And this reveals that the Lord Jesus Christ alone is the one who will reveal all and tell all. In this day when it's very difficult to hear the truth, you certainly don't get it through the news media today, and you don't get it from government, and you find that even colleges are great brainwashing institutions. The military does practically the same thing today. Who can you believe? Well, there's one who is the faithful and true witness, even in the days of apostasy, because you can't believe the church in many instances. The liberal church has no message for this hour. And now he's called the beginning of the creation of God. That means he's the creator in this day, which has accepted the myth of evolution. The evolutionary hypothesis is that which is accepted. And as I said to a college professor, a friend of mine, he and I were in school together. He's accepted the evolutionary hypothesis. And he says, I want facts. I want science. I said, wait just a minute. I said, there are not but two explanations for the origin of this universe you and I live in. One is speculation, because nobody was there to see it. Nobody's able to come up with the answer. The other is revelation. It's what the Word of God says. Now, I said, very frankly, the difference between you and me is you accept speculation I accept revelation. And as far as I'm concerned, I feel like I'm on more solid ground because I have the testimony of the one who did the creating, and he ought to know something about it, by the way. And he is the beginning of the creation of God. Now he says to this church, verse 15 and 16, I know thy works. Now always with the other churches, when he said that, he meant good works. He commended them for good works, but he has no word of commendation for this church whatsoever. And he says, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I'll spew thee out of my mouth. Now, let me say this, because we're coming to the end of this particular period, and I want to talk about that matter of being lukewarm, cold and hot, next time, which is the condition of the church today. And unfortunately, it's the condition of a great many so-called fundamental or conservative churches today. Thank God there are many that do not come in under that classification at all. But the thing that is absolutely startling and frightening, and it's fearful, he says, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, let's look at that for just this moment. He says, I'll vomit you out of my mouth. 
Does that sound to you like the church he's going to rapture and catch up? He says that where I am there ye may be also. I don't think so. This is not a church he draws to himself. But here's a church that he just vomits out because it's lukewarm. Lukewarm water makes you sick at your tummy. And I'm of the opinion today that if he spoke to a lot of churches and a lot of us believers, it's rather frightening. I think he'd say, you make me sick at my tummy. Your professed Christianity today. You say you love me. You say these things, but you really don't. May I say to you, this is a heart-searching message for this hour because we're living in the time of the Laodicean church and the Philadelphian church. Both of them are side by side, and there's a great bifurcation in Christianity. And it's not in denominations. It's actually not Romanism and Protestantism. The great bifurcation are those who believe the Word of God and follow it and love it and obey it, and those who reject it. That is the line of 